Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, happy Tuesday. Let's um, let's get underway here. <clears throat> uh, S&P 500 having a little bit of a rally here today. We're uh, I've got the buy sell ratio page to start out with, so we can kind of get an idea of a couple of different things. We'll just go over some of the market conditions and market sentiment at these levels uh, and see where some of the po uh, probabilities lie. Uh, one of the, the high probability locations or patterns that we're focusing on are just the multiple tops of the bearish, of these bearish moves. When we're in this state, when we're in this area where we have either red above green or green above red, either one of those, it's just that that can, you know, we can consider that to be our bias. That's the direction, that's the strength of the trend. And if you think about what, what a market is, all a market is, is just a, a group of stocks. S&P 500 is 500 stocks. Dow Jones Industrial Average is 30 stocks. NASDAQ 100 is 100 stocks. So in this case, um, our database is about you know 6,000 stocks, give or take. Uh, and this will include the, hold, the buys and the holds, or excuse me, the buys and the sells. It doesn't include the holds. So in this case, you can see that even still as of yesterday, it's, we're at 2,300 stocks to the with the currently are in downtrends and 800 stocks that are in uptrends so uh so a a if that's if that were equal we or we would have a buy sell ratio of one right now it's at 0.35 so we're we're still weighted towards bearish trends now it's in the process of of of, of changing you know obviously we can't go from from here to here without this shifting of uh, of of trend and so when we when we get the widest points happening right here we know that those are just unsustainable levels based you know based on the price activity here there's at some point it's going to reverse at some point it's going to bounce and so these extremes when they start to get extreme is typically when it feels the worst but we also know that that's typically where the trends do start to reverse and that's what we're seeing right here. We can use this pattern. We can use this indicator, I should say, in conjunction with the sentiment tab right here, particularly the default one, which is the S&P 500. And what ends up happening is you'll notice, and I'll, I'll toggle back and forth, but we get these extremes here and here that are also in, that are aligning exactly with this the wideness of this trend and the wideness of this trend. So when we look at those two together and we can say, oh, okay, I know that this is wide already. Well, let me look to see actually how wide that is. It's, yes, we're at an area where we could get a bounce. And so you, we can use those two things together together to say, uh, it looks like, you know, the, the sometimes if the markets are really aggressive to the downside, we can get maybe a you know, kind of a kind of a uh, capitulation type day or two or three or something like that. But typically, when we're in these ranges, we're getting close to a reversal. If we if we match that up with S and P 500 and price activity, we know that our swing low point and our swing high point on S and P 500. So I'm using SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for S and P 500. Uh, it's it's a, essentially a tradable stock. You can buy and sell this ETF, and by doing so, you're buying and selling the average of 500 companies. So it's buying the S&P 500 as a whole. I like to use it just because that's it's an actionable type of symbol. If you wanted to make a move on SPY today, you could do it. If you wanted to make a move on SPX, which is the S&P 500, um, you, you you could maybe for the futures markets or other things. But in this case, that's, that's the primary reason why I focus on the ETFs is because they're actionable um, uh, patterns now, or they're actionable instruments. Now we've got a couple things here. So that that extreme level on the sentiment and the, and the buy sell ratio was happening right around here on S&P 500. So we know we have a three-part counter trend. We know we're at or near this 618 50% zone when we start to get into this zone off of a trend okay so if we take this is the low and this is the high and we come back halfway 50% that's what this line right here represents is it's the halfway point of the of the entire uptrend with this being the low and this being the high so now we've retraced back about halfway we got a bounce right here the first time 
that did, ended up not being sustainable and then ended up rolling back over and then all of that support ended up taking place right here so now what we've done is we we rallied back up above this line and we got some reaction here a few days ago we got some reaction here a few days ago and now yesterday we moved a little bit higher let's see let me change this over um I want this perspective just like this so we can see those up days and down days. And we've got now, now this is going to become our support area. We're, we're, we rallied a little bit today, intraday, you can see now. Now, this area, this zone is becoming our really our actionable zone. Okay, it's going to bounce. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five. Today's the sixth day inside of this range above that 50% and, and bumping into that 382. So this box now, what we would want to see is we would want to see, you know, that this is not unexpected for it to kind of bounce and be fading a little bit in, into that today. We could, if it, if it reverses entirely and becomes a bearish bar, that might be concerning, but we should start to test this level. Again, if we could retest, come back down, maybe in a day or two, if it does, you know, if it breaks out, great. If it comes back and tests some support and then we get some additional confirmation higher, that could also be the case. Remember what the buy-sell ratio is doing though, okay? So when we're looking at S&P 500 moving this direction. Remember what this indicator is telling us right here. We're still, we still have this bearish tone we're working on this direction and we're working on getting back to an uptrend but we're not there yet so we could look at the s p 500 and say okay that's there is there is some weakness still in the overall market at least market defined by our the stocks in our database which are going to be lined up pretty closely to other you know other markets as a whole because we're including all of the markets and um or all of the indices essentially they're just all combined into one big database and so now we've got this telling us yeah there's still some weakness so there could be some selling there could be some support where it's kind of where we're caught right in this middle range and it's also part of the reason why the uh the the uh, direction alerts indicator is still kind of stuck at mildly bearish we're in this uptrend we're in this bull market but we haven't ticked over to that real bullish case yet part of that is because of this trend right here on s p 500 we've got this when it when it gets up here and it gives us a buy signal then we will get that indicator back bullish uptrend in a bull market but there's still you know we're we're getting some there, there, we, we could retrace and head back this direction if i were to take this chart and show you one other perspective if i move this in and it flips now and it flips this other direction so now it's taking the swing high and the swing low of a shorter time frame so it's grabbing it's grabbing the current the current high points and low points on the chart and the highest point on the chart is after the lowest point so it's automatically going to snap that and tell you what that short-term trend is obviously we know that but now we start to get um, some zones this direction and inside, so now we've retraced and found a whole bunch of resistance right inside that 3.0, 50% retracement area of this trend. So the bearish risk is that now this is counter trend, this, this is the trend direction, this is counter trend, and then we're, we've got more downside to come. So that's kind of why we're stuck right here in the middle, mildly bullish, which makes sense, but also this day where it's starting to fade is also gonna make sense because we've just got some weakness potentially in the market right here. Just warrants a little bit of caution. That being said, there's always gonna be pockets of stocks that are doing well, and we can find those quickly a couple of ways. We can look, click in on sectors. That's gonna take us here. One of the things we can quickly glance at, which I did this morning and said, is there anything that has a buy-sell ratio of one? Well, we've got this sector right here. And wouldn't you know it, it's oil and energy, okay? So we, we, all, we already knew that that was a strong sector. One of the other reasons was this sector's ETF, we could say we've had, you know, energy um, energy shares had been, you know, marching their way back up pretty strong here recently. And so we're seeing oil and energy, that's kind of the talk, uh, the talk of the town currently is because oil has been moving higher. So we could we can quickly glance at some of the leading stocks in that group and say, what are the leading stocks in a sector 
that is also strong. We know that this sector is strong. It's not the strongest in terms of rank. Part of that is because this rank, let me explain what this rank is doing. So the average rank right here is telling me the average rank of all of the stocks that are inside of this sector. So the average rank of all of those stocks is 71, okay, which is which is strong. So construction is the strongest sector per uh, per average rank. But one of the issues with that is there's look how many stocks there are. Okay, so oil and energy there's there's more, there's maybe double, and so the average rank's a little bit lower. So so we can use a couple of different indicators to be able to help determine that. But we certainly know based on buy sell ratio that this is this is strong in terms of the no, the number of stocks that are in uptrends not necessarily strong in that a lot of those stocks are have high ranks because oil and energy had been completely beat up right it had been bottoming out for the last you know four five six eight months um and not quite that long maybe five or six months and so that it, its average rank is it's gradually you, you're, i think we're going to start to see it you know springboarding up here if we continue to see oil and energy strong so now we can say we've got a strong sector we know that we've got a list of stocks that we can now go through and look at we click on that that takes us to our scans now we can say which one of those strong stocks in the energy sector are high ranking stocks and we can go through mtrx this is one that's been just really smooth and really trending nicely and continue to trend nicely up another three percent uh, let me take this back to signals and I had a real big, big bar here breaking out of that base and then continuing higher and it's just continuing to march higher. So it, as we, you know, as we go through and we ask ourselves, which stock should I be focusing on in which sectors, then this is one of the processes to go through and say, I, there's no reason for me to really focus on too many other stocks. I could, I could honestly look at the top 25 of these oil and energy stocks and, and make a decision if I wanted to have oil exposure in my portfolio, then these would be the ones I would want to focus on. And even more, even better is if I can get one that has gone from a hold to a buy, right? One of the ways to do that, if you're like, okay, oil is what's moving right now and oil is what I want to participate in, let me create my own custom scan to be able to do that. And I could simply just say, all right, I want, I want stocks that are above a dollar. Let's do market cap and volume, you know, decent size, just so we get, we don't get any crap in there. Let's leave PE and everything else alone. Um, market cap, let's now go with our signal change of hold to buy. And let's keep, let's move this down to 90. Now over here, I can type in oil. If I just start typing oil and energy and I select this one, this one is the entire sector it's going to include all of these okay so now now i can uh sort that or or look for the stocks and there's one okay so let's look at that one stock and you can see here that was a that was a good quality solid company that is uh, fundamentally looking pretty decent here as well last eps last sale everything's looking everything's green it's in this trend and and it was the, the scans are as of the, the prior night's update so this is today's current bar but we had now a buy signal uh, on that setting so i could say i could set up on my screener okay i'm going to save those and i'm just going to save those as you know oil stocks or whatever it is i want to name that now I could go in tomorrow and I could just do a quick, you know, my scan's going to be in here already. So I could pull that in. It's going to pull in if there's any stocks in that area specifically for me to look at. And now I've, now I've created my own little custom setup instead of going through this process. And from there, I could even add even more criteria. If I said I wanted, you know, some additional fundamental data, some earnings and sales and all of those other things. I could include that. So one of the ways to be able to continue to refine your process on which stocks you're looking for is what stocks are working. We know that from a couple of different factors. Either I'm taking this top list or I'm like, man, this is the buy sell ratio on this one is is over one. Now this bottom one, this this um, this is still we still we have it unclassified because one of the issues a couple of years ago was all of these SPAC funds, if you remember SPACs, special 
special interest acquisition uh, company or something like that. They were issuing these these um, SPACs for maybe you know ten million dollars. They were essentially just funding companies. They would then be they would get funded as an as an IPO, and then they would go out and buy another company, or they would go out and, and buy other merger com companies. So most of these. Are, they're just complete crap. So we're, we're just continuing to working on work on getting rid of those. So as you go through and look at those, they're in the, in the vast majority of cases they're not even individual stocks. They're just these special acquisition funds. And notice how they're almost all at ten dollars because that's where they IPO at. And so that that kind of explains that you can really just kind of ignore it. We've been watching it just to make sure it's not including anything else. If it's not, then we're going to just start getting rid of. Get rid of the unclassified stuff. So, it, you know, long story short, you can just ignore that area of the um, um, of this scan. Or if you had a question on it, that explains it. Um, so, so, it also, you know, we're also going to see some of the weakness. Consumer staples. We've talked about that for the last couple of weeks. Why in the world are are consumer staple stocks um, getting smashed? Because the you would think that if we were entering into a recession that uh, people still have to be buying consumer staples and things like that well the issue may be that yes you know people people can't afford stuff and they're not they're not for whatever reason inflation is still is still high we're all tightening up our belts we're we're budgeting we're spending less money um consumer staples can still get affected and it and it has really significantly which is interesting 117 stocks in that list and if we take a look and see what some of those names are in here we we're, we're probably going to see a lot of names that are very familiar and sorry let me try that one more time and see if uh, where did that go staples right here oh there it went okay uh let's take a look and see so we've got uh these first couple i don't recognize we've got coke We've got Dole. We recognize those, right? We've got Molson Coors. Molson Coors. We've got Unilever. You know their soaps and shampoos. And we've got JJ uh, Snack Foods, Smuckers, uh, National Beverage, Monster Beverage. Uh, there's lots of lots of Coke. I think these are some bottlers. Probably they spin those off as different companies. Uh, Krispy Kreme. Clorox, PepsiCo, Heinz, you know, so so Albertsons, the, these stocks are, are really weak and some of them are just really weak. Like Smuckers has just really gotten in the last year. It's it's just completely, you know, a pretty, pretty nasty fall, 30 percent year to date down. So, you know, sometimes sometimes looking at the data, we can start to you know, at least start asking some questions. Why, why, why would uh, consumer staples be doing this? I don't have the answer to that, but at least raises a question that we could maybe go out and, and look into. And that's why a lot of times I'm like, ah, it really doesn't matter, honestly. But other times I'm I'm fascinated by that. Why in the world is that happening? And in this in this particular area, or or oil, or utilities, or you 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 pick the story, and it's fun to sometimes. Uh, look to see and also in cases like this maybe it's just deeply oversold deeply oversold now maybe an opportunity for a contrarian type perspective to say um we're, we'll, let's watch some of these you know let's let's go back to that chart and see was it extreme uh not quite yet it probably was on one of these moves back here but when this extreme gets all the way over here to this downside it works just the same as this upside it's going to bounce it's going to it's going to move itself back up into this zone if it's a, still a continued downtrend then it's going to continue to look like this chart and that is just more downside with a little bit of a pause more downside a little bit of a pause it gets back up in this trending zone and then back down again so the, these all of these stocks have a, ma a massive amount of work to do and this also kind of goes to my point that what's the point what's the point in trying to to pick at the bottom right trying to pick it here or trying to pick it here or trying to pick it here or here or even right now why why in the world even try to attempt it if the if the probability is more downside uh, and that's why we want to try and trade stocks that are in the path of least resistance 
So we want this exact chart, but we want it to the upside. Or if you're shorting stocks or, tr or trading put options or some kind of a bearish strategy, then this is exactly what you would want. You would want a little counter trend that moves back like this. It takes this momentum off of extreme back into this trending zone and then back again, okay, then down again. So as those trends are developing and you're looking for things, maybe even to trade around, ideas to trade around something a little bit shorter term, or like I say, maybe an option or something that uh, that is maybe a little more, little higher octane than just trading the stock itself or sitting on your hands, then these are some ideas to be able to look for as well. What's moving lower? Has it moved up into the sell zone? Um, and it works just, you know, the, tr the momentum zone works the same on the downside as it does on the upside. Uh, in fact, if we take a look at this and I pull this over, oops, let me just refresh that. And let's go like, <clears throat> let's go like this. So now we're connected to this low. And it's in a downtrend and it's in the down, the, the momentum zone to the downside. Still more, still more, still more. Okay, it's still going down now. Now it's working its way back up again. The the one location that it can work itself back up to is back up to here. I, I don't know that it ever does, but it's still inside of that downtrend zone. So you can say, okay, what am I looking for? I'm still expecting more downside to come. Even if I get a rally, I'm expecting more downside. Okay, and then we get more downside, more downside. Eventually, it's gonna snap back, but we get more downside. So that trending zone becomes our bias direction. Which direction should I be focused on? In this case, it's to the downside. When it gets extreme, relax, let it pull back over a little bit, then maybe look for something else. That was kind of a little side note, but uh, but uh, interesting nonetheless to be able to, to utilize some of that um, additional additional strategies for downtrend in stocks as well, as well as looking for things that are working to the upside. Um, let's see, a couple other ideas. Let's talk about, um, well, actually, let's talk about um, the, the bond market here because TLT, now this is an interesting pattern because it's exactly what we just talked about. We've talked about this for weeks now. This is a this is going to be a battle for TLT for any for any trend to start to reverse. And now we've got this another another move down lower, this rally, this counter trend. We could be retesting support or we could continue lower. Um it's it's just getting, you know, it's just really insane honestly how these interest rates have been reacting but this is still a major story and so as you're glancing and tuning into the the story on bonds and you're saying well okay i know it's in a downtrend what that means is interest rates are still going higher we may be attempting some support could we continue an upward trend yes we could but we're like smack dab in this downtrend it's lasted a long time i you know for sure over the last really two years if we were to go out that long we're, we're extended to the downside, something horrific, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a historical move in bonds. Um, that's, that's, if we continue to see that sliding, we, I don't think we're going to see any rally in equities. Uh, it, it's got, I think the bond market and interest rates in particular have got to start to come back down for equities to have any significant upside as a group as a whole um, and that's and that's a factor the other real big factor is in oil okay so we've got two things happening we'll talk about here our rank in commodities we've got silver steel gold we'll talk about gold but we've got oil which has also had a real big move over the last year it's counter trended back down and then we had um, the geopolitical issues here pullback and now a couple days ago we're back up in this momentum zone so we'll see if we can hold this if oil holds that and if it's just you know starts to chug way back to the upside or if this is a you know a counter trend move and we get a, a maybe a deeper retracement back down into this zone it was a pretty strong trend that we had for quite a, a length of time but we've got an area that we can focus on the area we can focus on is this 
support area, this 77.74 right here on USO. So a way to kind of extrapolate that out into an, a trade idea is say, well, what did we what did we just do? We know that oil is moving higher. It's in that momentum zone. We went out to sectors. We went out to that sector scan and we said oil and energy. We clicked it. We looked at it. We looked at a couple. That, that was actually a split. I need to get updated. MTRX looking good. NGL starting to move higher out of this base, a little bit extreme right here. BIST working nicely here as well. Um, HNRG, all of these now getting more upside. That's a coal stock. Um, so at, in that process, what have we been? We've been talking now for 27 minutes and we essentially just went through the entire process of what we're looking for and why based on current market conditions, right? We can't, we, we just have to do, we have to take what the market gives us instead of trying to force our will on the market or saying, I like Walmart and I like Netflix and I like Apple and I like Amazon and I like Microsoft and they're cool companies and I know their brand name, but um, I don't know if I should be buying those because I'd wanna buy a stock or I don't know what I should be buying because I don't know any other names of any other companies. Well, this is a way to be able to filter quickly through some of those ideas, what's working, what's not working. And then obviously the new buy section here is gonna aggregate all those. Anything that has a new buy signal, whether it's education or whether it's microchips or whether it's, I don't know what cantaloupe is, financial transactions, okay, or RVMD, revolution medicines, that was actually a big one. Uh, those are always, was, some of these biotechs have had some crazy moves the last few days. Um, music, those are, those, those are not ideal patterns. Some of these aren't, but nonetheless, they're, um, it's gonna pull them in. It's gonna pull some of those in, in a, across all industries. So it's also, it's also a good way to quickly look and say, ah, oh, I can see I've got four or five or six, um, uh, oil stocks, or in this case, here's a gold stock that's starting to move because we are seeing gold starting to move. Let's look at a longer time frame because gold's been really volatile. So some of these stocks have been volatile. AGI had a move, pullback, lots of false starts here before it breaks out. So could it be on a on its move higher? I think it, I think there's a good shot on these if gold continues to move higher because gold has almost the exact same pattern. If we go back to if we go back to sectors, go to commodities, and then look at gold right here, that gold retraced into that 50618, moving higher, looks like it wants to go higher. So then I could say, all right, let's go look for some gold stocks. I could do the same thing on my scans here, where I could set up, you know, these oil stocks that are in, uh, that setup that we had, we could change that over and go to, um, and go to gold stocks and just add some gold stocks in there. So really simple process to be able to, to really define what you want to be able to, to, um, to look for that day or in those market conditions. And that's, that's our current market conditions. Okay. Um, sorry, I just had an alarm there telling me to do something. The question is, what, what, is the, what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> got like five, six alarms all day long telling me to do stuff. I need to make better notes on those. Um, I think it's to pick a kid up from some activity. To be honest, I'll double check that here in just a minute. Logic, Logitech, um, some, some inter just some interesting patterns on, the pro on, on what's going on right here. Now, we're gonna talk about the portfolios and individual stocks more on Thursdays. Um, I'm building out several ideas for us. We've got the new buy daily, okay, our new buy daily portfolio this is just flat out we're buying the new buy stock of the day from the muscle stock list <clears throat> rain or shine uptrend downtrend we're buying uh, of two two and a half percent of of whatever that stock is if i already own it in the portfolio I'll, i'm skipping it and then i'll go to the just the next one on the list like today was tal the the top two i think were, were wfrd and one other one i think smc we already have those so tal was the new buy in that portfolio today the other portfolio is the um, 
the sell to buy list. I started this one a little bit later. And so the sell to buy is simply pulling in a stock that has gone from a, it's, it's the first buy signal after a sell signal. And that scan can be found here on muscle stocks. And then this tab right here, sell to buy. All of these stocks will have had, then it'll be the most recent buy signal after a sell signal. Um, it's not, um, yeah, so here's a good example. So it's it's moved from here back to here. Uh, and those are, that, that's just a little bit different strategy, right? And, and, and ideally, a lot of times, these are the stocks that really give us some good momentum because they've, they, they have kind of phased out all of the demand, all of the, 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 the selling has taken place here, and now we're getting fresh demand relatively early in those strategies. The other one that I'm working on that we're uh, going to start following or I'm going to implement is, where to it go right here? I need to rename it and sort it. But it's essentially looking for a new buy, hold to buy, 70% rank or higher. I'm going to trim that up as well. But it's got more fundamentals. So these are all going to be fundamentally strong companies as well as price pattern fundamentals. And there's some good looking names in here. Alamos that we just covered. Rover, which is an interesting stock right now. Rover is a, um, it's kind of a dog walking um, Airbnb type of thing where you can, if you're a, you know, if you're a pet owner or a pet lover, you can, you can hire out your services as a pet lover to walk someone's dog or to house sit their dog or something like that. It's kind of, it's kind of a cool technology, uh, but, but the company's doing well. Fundamentally, they're doing really well and they just had a new buy signal yesterday and it's up 2%. So we talked about that over the last few weeks to where if I want, if I want to be able to fine tune these scans, if these are too broad, then this is the way to be able to do that is to go in and say, I, I, I want the same concept. I want a scan that's producing a stock. Um, you know, even if it's one a day, this is going to produce more than that per day. But if I really, really wanted to just fine tune that even more so I could say, okay, well now instead of one, let's change this to 10. Let's change this to 10. That's annual earnings per share and that's sales. Okay, so this kind of becomes my 10, 10, 10 scan. There's 12, okay, so now, now I've got even a tighter group of stocks that have really good fundamentals and they're trending higher um, this could be a really solid group. This is one I pointed out in my update this morning. This is an, a really strange stock. Keep an eye on it because it's VIRC. It's a furniture stock, but it's had a real big run from four to eight and, it, and it's really volatile. So I'd use lots of caution right here, but it had a big down day and it was up 18% yesterday and looks like it could break out. These kind of stocks, when they move like this and they pause and they give a little bit of a counter trend right here, they, they can really launch. Um, as as re, you know, really um, uh, aggressive type of trades, but in this case, the fundamentals are backing it. So you may you may ha have institutions that are uh, that are piling into this stock because they're like, what the heck is happening? Who are these guys? What are they doing? Why are they making so much money? Okay, and you can see the volume included in this uptrend. So those are uh, the, the I don't have to know what they do or why they do it, but this scan really is just telling me. Hey, these guys are trending higher aggressively and they've got amazing fundamentals because I just sorted for amazing fundamentals. I didn't save it, dang it. So it just ticked back. Um, but let's see if it's still in there. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go in and, and resave that. I'm actually going to do that because that's, that's, a, that's a good scan. Now, if you need reference to these scan criteria, Again, you know, a lot of times in the recording, what I'll do is I'm like, what, what did I talk about in that? I'll go back and I'll look through the recording and then just just pause it and say, ah, okay, there's the there's the settings on that. Uh, but let's change, I'm gonna change this up to 90. So now we've got even six stocks that are in there. Let's save that. And I'm going to create a new scan and not extreme new buy some fundamentals <clears throat> i'll rename that but this is now now this is a really good quality scan to be pulling in high quality names that are making money 
they've got it they're early in their trends they may or may not be you know they may be extreme or they may different factors obviously we can go in and include but you know what you're getting now in fact this is a good one smci amazing fundamentals nice rally counter trend it's kind of pause it's working its way back up again uh, a good scan to be able to include that one was in the new buy list but so was a whole bunch of other stocks i could say i, I don't know if these guys are, are meeting the criteria that i would like to have and sometimes i do get asked what well i don't know what criteria i want i don't know what criteria are good okay well the the the, the bottom line is you, the, you just have to remember that companies that are making money long uh, the company a stock price is the present value of the future earnings of of a company and a stock price is ever is the market's perspective of the present value of the future earnings of the company they have to guess okay it's not public information that's why insider trading is illegal because if you know what's coming and you buy you can buy ahead of that well, we don't know what's coming but we do know that it's a company that's clicking all, on all cylinders if a company has got you know, um, EPS, you know, anything above 30, their last quarter EPS was 140%. Their sales growth was up, sales growth quarter over quarter, which is every three months, where in the last three months, they increased sales by 70% over the prior quarter. They increased their EPS 100% over the prior quarter. They're selling, they're selling stuff. And that, and that, and, and whether or not they're profitable or not, the EPS and some of these other factors, the, the market is going to benefit a stock like that. And so if you want a little to add a little bit more safety, theoretically, it's, it adds more safety. I don't know that it always does because it on sometimes the market will go nuts on a stock like this. Yes, it's making money, but it bids it up like net like NVIDIA. It bids it up so that its PE ratio is is 200. A PE ratio is the price to earnings ratio. So the price of the stock versus the earnings of the company. So right here, the price of the stock in relation to the earnings is 25. So it's 25 to one, and it's going to be higher or lower depending on the market's aggressiveness. So if I were to say, in fact, let's look at that and say uh, NVIDIA, it's come down quite a bit okay so it's, it's at 100 it was up it was before these earnings it was like 240 or something so when the earnings catch up the pe number will come down and so now the market may say all right these guys are high flyers it it's it justifies a 200 pe and so let's bid it up again and, and then let's wait and see what the earnings come and if the earnings are amazing it'll knock this number back down again and the price can keep going because the price is trying to catch up with a multiple a pe multiple that the market is willing to allow for and that changes within different sectors you'll see pe ratios so um different among different you know a tech a, a tech pe company is going to have a different market perspective than an oil pe company or something like that all right let me look at a couple questions here a uh, question is is the advantage of specific stocks in a sector versus gld the opportunity to position more of the move um so what i what i think you're asking is should i buy should be should you be buying specific stocks instead of uh gold in this case this is gold there, there's a couple of perspectives i'll answer this question and, and then kind of piggyback that on one other one so the answer to so gld is not is it, it, it tracks the price of gold so it's not a it is not an etf that's tracking maybe like a group of gold stocks it's actually the price of gold itself. And so if you're following the price of gold itself and it's moving higher, then that, that's one thing. If it's, so you wouldn't be able to say, oh, I want to buy, well, I, I suppose you could. You could say gold is moving higher and so I'm going to own gold. Or you could say gold is moving higher and so I'm going to own gold stocks, okay? Because then I could say, I theoretically, you should get a magnified return on a gold stock. If I go here, in fact, let's look, let's pull them in from this basic materials and then gold. Let's go gold mining. Let's go these 12. Okay. So I could say gold, which is GLD, is moving higher, but theoretically, I should make more money on the stock that is that gold is their raw material, right? Harmony gold now, because gold is moving higher, their their commodity is moving higher. 
they should be able to extract it out of the ground and then sell it for more money. So the, the profitability of a company that's mining the gold should, should again, in theory, do better than the, than the, the commodity itself, just like an oil stock. And oil, oil is a commodity. It's a product. It's a raw material that companies are using. And the ones that are mining it, obviously, if, if gold goes from you know a thousand dollars an ounce to two thousand an ounce, if I'm mining it, my cost of mining it is not increasing hundred percent. My cost of mining it is still what it is. But now I can sell it for two thousand dollars instead of one thousand. I just I dump my, my my ability to sell it for a higher price is going higher. So you'll see gold stocks moving higher and higher, just like you'll see oil stocks moving higher and higher because their product that they're selling, they can sell for more. Their ability to extract it typically does not change. It's typically fixed cost. They know what that is, but now they can sell it for a multiple higher and make more money. That's why they're, these gold and, sil and oil stocks are so cyclical because they, they, they move with the price of their underlying commodity. Now, uh, uh, one other topic on top of that was if I, were, if I wanted to own gold ETFs, or oil ETFs, a group of the miners. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to pull any of those in here now, but let's just take a look and see if there are, and I, and I don't know the symbols off the top of my head, um, but I could say, okay, you, you'll find ETFs that are like gold, gold bug ETF, gold mining ETF. The ETF in that case is, allocated among all of the gold stocks uh, gld is just not one of them okay and and uh, i'll look into that a little bit more but you could even google that and be like what's you know what's a gold bug etf and then come back and search that or what's an oil um sector etf uh, although i will say in i don't have one on gold but if you go to sectors and you go to sector etfs this is an example of I don't have one for gold, like I say, but if all I wanted to do was own the entire energy sector, then I could own IYE. Okay? It's it's going to it's going to include all of the stocks in the um, in the energy sector, and then I don't have to fiddle with it. But there, you're diversified. You're diversified among all of them, which may be good, but that also may be bad. There there's a trade-off in the ETF in owning, because now it's, you know, now it owns 50 or 60 or hundred stocks instead of one or two or three. And, and, and there's times where we can go in and pick that Harmony Gold or pick that, uh, uh, that oil stock. Like, like, you know, I'd be looking on oil stocks. I'd be looking at some of these oil stocks that are the high rankers. Uh, if I were to go to indexes or excuse me, into sectors and we go to oil and energy, of this group here, these top four or five, those are the ones that are trending. I don't know why, um, but that's, you know, that, that I don't have to know why, but I know that this is a group of stocks. If I'm gonna look for oil stocks, these are the ones I wanna be participating in that are moving higher. I could even f filter that into saying, okay, I want them to be moving higher, but I also want earnings from those as well. A couple ideas for you. Uh, awesome, Dave. A great question. I'm going to finish on that note. I appreciate everyone's time and effort today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye now.